Greetings friends, Jollis Paul here. We're gonna talk about the fear system and what are my recommendations for eight fear, 16 fear, and 32 fear, because that is what you need in order to unlock the statues. So I'm gonna go through what I think are the easiest ones, the ones that you can do pretty much without any, any problem, the kind of like free points. Um, I always start down here, Vow of Desperation. I think I think that you can do nine minutes per biome. This is Now, there's two different kind of ways of thinking about this. You can do things where you can go as slowly as you need to, in which case you would not use Vow of Desperation at all. Um, but I like to use one or two levels of it. I think seven minutes is okay if you're going fast. Alternately, you can like boost up uh, Vow of Dominance. Or, or vow of commotion, but I think this makes the game way more difficult if you go this way and more likely that you're going to take a bunch of damage and die, <laughs> which you don't want because this this uh, encounters Bye doesn't include right. bosses, but dominance does include bosses. All enemies have 10, 30% uh, more health and you only get three points for that. Same over here, just three points for that too, whereas you can get three just by going uh, for seven minutes per biome. I think I think you could probably do that. If you, want, if you wanted to bring it down to nine, that's okay. That gives you one. So that's maybe where I would start. Next, I would decide what kind of a what kind of a build you're doing. If you're gonna do a build where that does lots of damage that goes really fast, like a Hestia build or a dagger build, or even even like a, a staff build, maybe. One of the faster weapons, basically. Um, you can put on a couple of these that gives you a couple points um, But what really this depends on the type of build that you're doing I would say vow of arrogance you can put two points on that that gives you that brings you to five You have to be a little bit careful with the number of boons that you pick up That are of higher rarity because you can kind of screw yourself over with how much mana you have but um, If you want to just do do one point that's fine, but it can give you four points, which is a lot uh, four points is pretty good. Um, then I think maybe I would take one away from Vow of Scars. I'd take one from Vow of Destitution. Vow of Suffering, you can easily game this, actually. You could do this. Um, you could maximize this for four, four more points. Um, what you do is you find the weakest enemy that you can, and you intentionally get hit by it. And so instead of doing two damage, it does four. Or instead of doing five damage, it does 10, Like right? That's not too bad. You just want to avoid getting hit by one of those big monsters <laughs> that, that'll hit you for like, you know, 15. And you don't want to get hit by for 30, or in this case, gosh, what would that be, 60? <laughs> that would be a bummer. So be careful about Vow of Suffering, but you can game it if you know, if you can kind of figure out like, okay, here's a small enemy. I'll take one little hit from this enemy. But it is a little bit of a, of a risky thing. So maybe just one point in that uh, for two. But but there you go. Now you're at eight. That's your first eight, I'd it's say. Vow. Some people don't mind Vow of Wandering. This is where you f might find uh, enemies from other other biomes. The thing is, their health is going to be much, much higher. So this one's a little bit risky. But I, you could put one on there. Uh, Vow of Haunting. Once again, this is going to take up a lot of time. I don't know if it's really worth two points to, to get it to 50%, maybe 25% is reasonable, but you're gonna have to run around and pick up these little green skulls that enemies drop, because if you don't pick those up, then an enemy comes right back. And so especially when you kill those big enemies with lots of health and armor, you're gonna need to pick those up because if they spawn back in, it's a it's a real bummer because it's a big enemy that you have to that you have to beat off again. So Vow of Haunting, you just I have to be mindful. Right. Two two of these is gonna be there's gonna be a lot of little green skulls for you to pick up, and that can be very very obnoxious sometimes. I think. Uh, so I'll leave that one up to you. I probably would do it at the higher difficulty, but not at like the eight or the sixteen maybe. Um, let's see. I think I did do that when I when I was doing it because I didn't I was I was trying it out But the more I think about it and the more I play with it the more obnoxious it feels it feels very very obnoxious actually to have Vow of bitterness I swear it is annoying, but it's three points and it's just you know What is it four boons at the end of the day and you can easily get a build going with four fewer boons? That's not a that's not a huge deal vow forsaking Probably is fine. Once again, it depends on how simple or complex your build is, how many boons you need to find. But Vow of Forsaking can be very, very good if you have a build in mind that's like, 
simple it's got a few core boons that you need and then you're set but if you need like a bunch of duo boons and you need you know this or that and the other or a legendary right i, I well, first of all i wouldn't try that with the higher higher fear uh runs because it's hard to find boons because you're always having to heal yourself or you're always having to go for more health or just things that aren't more boons but I, I think you could pick this up and right. probably be okay if you that's that would be my other piece of advice is with these builds just with, with the higher fear builds go for something that's simple go for a simple build that you know works that you don't need much you just need one or two boons to get online and then everything else is gravy beyond that you can go for that uh, you can take away half of your mana that's that's okay and so then there we're at 16 right 16 is is pretty good and once again there's some flexibility in here right if you throw a vow of rebuke in instead of some of these other ones you know obviously it's a flexible system i would never do vow of abandon Our arcana cards are so are so good um not being able to have death defiances not having all that bonus damage uh you know all that stuff that you get from having arcana cards i wouldn't i wouldn't abandon those i wouldn't i wouldn't get rid of those especially like the slow down time effect with using using mana i think is extremely valuable when you're up against tougher enemies which you will be i would be careful about combining vow of scars with vow of blood because you're gonna if you if you choose to have less healing then also having enemies do more damage is going to be very very painful right because you can't heal all that damage that they do i'd also be careful of vow of fury enemies being nice. faster is a bigger deal which is why it's three right it's a bigger deal than you probably realize um i i would not put that on until you're trying to push for 32 32 fear alternately you can go for it why i think i think the the theme of this of this story is that there are many many ways to do this but you can just train yourself to be to get used to the enemies being extra fast but when it comes right down to it it's like hard to dodge a lot of these attacks because they are going so fast they are attacking so fast and so it, it can be very difficult to dodge but one point for for three is probably good once we're at 32 fear i think we have to do this i think we have to have a little bit of each of these probably both the revenants um probably going at seven minutes and then it's kind of up to you, <laughs> up to you. Oh, well, it's always up to you, I guess, right? Like I, I would put that at two. Now we're at 30. So this is probably, it's it's close to everything being uh, where we want it to be. We could maybe add add it to 60% to damage, although that's, that's a lot. 60% damage is whew, a lot more. Maybe oh, doing that right. instead and then throwing in, I don't know, throwing in that or something, right? So, or, or maybe even better would be that. So just try, try very hard not to take a lot of damage. But this is probably what I would run if I was, if I was doing 32 heat. I have to check my videos. I can't remember exactly what I did for 32 uh, fear. I mean, not, I keep saying heat. Heat is the system for Hades 1, if you don't know. So I get that mixed up sometimes. Here's the deal, though. I think that they're going to change a lot of this. This system, in my opinion, is it's fine but it's they're gonna they're gonna adjust it quite a bit so this is just like if you're early early to the game this is this guide might help you but there i'll probably take this video down once the other system is in place i mean it'll be similar to this it'll have a lot of these same nodes but it'll probably add more things like like modified boss fights modified champion uh enemies the the enemies with the high armor they had a whole bunch of different abilities in hades one and i'm guessing they're going to implement that eventually those are some of the best ones to have because once you get used to that type of enemy you know how to handle them you know what to, how to deal with them where it's, it's just difficult to deal with enemies doing tons more damage or all enemies doing tons more damage or all enemies having way more health or all you know enemies spawning in you know, more enemies spawning in all the time right so I think this is what I what I ended up doing. But once again, it's kind of it's kind of up to you how what try things out, see what what works for you. The only one I would just absolutely not go for is Vow of Abandon or or I wouldn't I wouldn't go zero percent healing because you just you need to be able to heal yourself. I, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing that can heal you when this is when this is on. Uh, I'm pretty sure. 
but reducing your healing by 75% or, or 50% is probably doable. Maybe leaving it at 75% and then, uh, I don't know, maybe having enemies have a little bit more health. It's, it's once again, there's some flexibility in there. See what, see what you're comfortable with. Eval Fury is very dangerous, I would say. It's, there's just a lot of things to be, be careful of. If you're a very fast player, if you're a very fast player, I don't think you'd be watching this guide anyway, because you're probably doing just fine. But if, if you're a very fast player, you can go for the five minutes through each region. You know, if you're going to do five minutes through each region, I'd be very careful about more encounters and more health. Right. Like I would I would probably do that so that you can kill enemies really, really fast. Otherwise, if they, if they spawn in really fast or if, sorry, if they if they keep spawning in more and more waves of enemies, and you're you're running down the timer it's gonna be it's gonna be tough okay there you have it uh i think that that just about does it i you know with this without of arrogance once again maybe just try to focus on getting common or rare boons only even if you can you know up the rarity of a boon you can you can choose not to do that uh, but once again one one mana one mana potion or whatever those things are uh, gives you 30 mana, and so that that deals with three levels of vow of arrogance. So you can you can kind of counter counterbalance that a little bit. Okay. All right, friends. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you want more guides like that, please let me know in the comments. Hopefully, this was clear and understandable. But um, I think the key is just finding a build that you think is good, simple. You know how to play it well, and then uh, you know the 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 fear settings will kind of like match whatever build you're you're going for right and you kind of want something that's fast you want something that is high damage obviously something that you can stay safe with so maybe that has a little bit of range um i think you know the daggers are strong but focusing on the attack with daggers can be a little bit dangerous because you're you know you're taking a lot of damage because you're up close to to enemies or maybe the axe is is great but you want to be careful about because you have to be close with the axe. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Friends, take it easy, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.